This is the I Don't Want a Divorce podcast with Dr. David Clark. This episode is entitled My Spouse Wants Out, Part One. I received a great question uh, from a podcast listener, and I'm going to be focused on that particular question and the answer to it in the next number of podcasts, all based on my book, I Don't Love You Anymore. This is a scenario where you are clipping along when you're married, you think everything's fine, or, or it's not maybe great, but you have no idea the atom bomb is coming, and your spouse says, I don't love you anymore, or words to that effect, I'm done, I want out, I want a divorce. What do you do? Having the right strategy at that point is critical. So let me read uh, this question and then with a few of my editorial comments and then we will launch into um, this first podcast. This dear lady has written a question and uh, been married for 18 years. Here's what she says. My husband has just announced that he is leaving after 18 years of marriage. That the love is still there. Well, that's what he says. Uh, Yeah, it's not there, believe me. It, that's nice to say. However, uh, she continues, he can't live separate lives anymore. He has voiced that he intends to pursue happiness. Yeah, that's exactly what he's going to pursue. Good luck finding it. But anyway, being happy is more important to him than the marriage. Okay, and he also indicates be it alone or with another woman. Whoa, talk about insulting. And the fact of the matter is, for this dear lady, he's got someone else right now. That's 98% chance. When they go so far as to mention it, Yeah, he's probably got someone else. That's the next shock you're going to get. So get ready for that. Her precious kids have vocalized to me that they believe dad is a hypocrite. Boy, he certainly is. Do as I say, not as I do. I have read your book, she says, and they've been helpful to her. That's great. I appreciate that. Uh, She loves him and prays for him daily. I would continue to do so, but we're going to do some tough love, not the chasing after him love. She has desperately tried to remind him of what the Bible says about marriage. Well, he doesn't care. We're going to stop doing that. I'm going to have her stop doing that. Love is a choice, not a feeling. She says she's right. He doesn't care. Of course, it follows. He does not surround himself with godly friends. And frankly, the influence is very unsavory. Yeah, I'll bet it is. I'm not sure what to do. Well, I have an aggressive, tough love, biblical plan of action when you're in this kind of a situation. When your spouse wants out of the marriage and they've dropped the bomb on you, I don't love you anymore, I can't do this anymore, I want to be happy, etc. All the stupid, sinful, lame excuses. You, while you haven't been a perfect spouse, have not committed some serious damaging sin like adultery, emotional, physical abuse, etc. But when you hear these words from your spouse, you're shell-shocked, you're stunned, and you want to save your marriage. So the strategy I'm going to be laying out in these next number of uh, podcasts, at least five, maybe maybe more, all based on my book, I Don't Love You Anymore. My strategy for you will empower you, give you confidence, give you back control of your life, help you move on with your life, take care of your kids if divorce happens, because you might not be able to stop him. But also get this, and this is a main reason why I do it. This strategy will also give you the best chance to shake up your sinning spouse, cause him to repent, if it's a him, and to want to win you back and work on the marriage. Again, based on my book, What to Do When Your Spouse Says, I Don't Love You Anymore. It's also an ebook if you want to get it right away. And of course, available on my on my uh, website, davideclarkphd.com, as well as I do phone advice sessions uh, for spouses across the country who are in this very situation. Spouse wanting out, desperate situation, what do I do? It's important to get the strategy in place as quickly as you can so that you might be able to avail yourselves of that if you'd like to, phone advice, email advice as well. Well, Let me continue with this scenario. First of all, when you hear these words, you must understand exactly what I don't love you anymore means or I want out. It does not mean any of these things. I'm unhappy, but I still want our marriage to work. I want to get my love for you back. If we get some help, maybe we can save the relationship. I'm confused and not sure what I want. If you make some changes, I think we'll be okay. You know, you're desperate to read some kind of meaning into these statements that maybe there's some hope, and I'm telling you, there's not, at least not at this point. The hope will come through the strategy. There are no ifs, maybes, or will sees about it. It is not a cry for help. It is a cry of finality. It is a slamming door. 
here's what I don't love you anymore or words to that effect really and truly means. Any indication that your spouse wants out, that they don't love you, that they're not happy in the marriage, this is what it means. I've had it with you and our marriage. Our marriage is over. I've thought this through very carefully and I'm not changing my mind. I have a plan of escape mapped out and I'm going to follow it. I am divorcing you. Now, they don't say these things, but I'm telling you that's what they're communicating. Let's say, then I'm assuming here that it's the husband, it, of course, could easily be the wife that wants out. He's not kidding. He's not trying to get your attention. He has decided to get out of the marriage, period. In a high percentage of cases, he has also found someone else he'd rather be with. As a matter of fact, in 85 to 90% of cases in my 33-year career as a clinical psychologist working with couples, the person that says, I don't love you, that indicates they went out of the marriage, has someone else that they're already seeing. As I explained the toughest nails approach they must take in response to an unloving husband, many of my female clients say, but if I'm too tough, I'll scare him off. I've heard that a million times. My response is always the same. You can't scare him off because he's already gone. These clients desperately want to believe he's teetering on the fence. He's not. He's jumped off the fence and is five neighborhoods away. Oh, he may act confused and all torn up inside. Don't buy it. A lot of these husbands ought to receive Oscars for their This Really Hurts Me performances. Baloney. The pain you see is either fake or just the last few gasps of guilt for what he's going to do. The guilt won't stop him. All he's worried about now is how to get away from you with the least amount of damage to his reputation and bank account. Now, another truth you must come to grips with is the most painful one. This is not the man you married, not even close. Your loving, kind, and loyal spouse is gone, completely gone. In his place is this stranger. You've never met this person. If he didn't know better, you'd say an alien has taken over the mind and body of your husband, and this alien is not nice. Your new husband is cold, mean, devious, manipulative, and 100% selfish. He has no sympathy or compassion. He couldn't care less what you think and feel. His determination to meet his selfish needs is destroying your marriage, your family, and your dreams. You can't believe how he looks at you or how he treats you. Is this the same person you married? No, he is not. And the sooner you realize this, the better off you and your marriage will be. A huge part of your denial is thinking you're still dealing with your same old husband. Here are some of the favorite excuses and my responses from women who think they're living with the man they married. Here's the client. I think he really wants to save the marriage. Here's my response. No, he doesn't. He wants to end it. As you can tell, I'm pretty blunt because that's what they need at this point. It's what you need if your spouse wants out. The client says, well, he's so stressed at work lately. Maybe that's it. I say back, we're all stressed at work. Stress doesn't cause what you're seeing. I'm stressed at work too, but I'm not walking out on my Sandy. He's walking out on you because he wants to. The client says, I think he's confused. I say, no, he's not. He knows exactly what he wants. He has planned this for months. Every step is planned out. He's not winging it. The client will say, he's still living with me though. Surely that's a good sign. I say back, that means nothing. It's cheaper and more convenient than a hotel or an apartment. He's only using your home as his temporary headquarters. He has planned his escape, believe me. Then, of course, these ladies, sweethearts usually, will, will, in feeling so badly, will say something like this. Well, this is just not like him. This is my fault. It must be my fault. I must have made some mistakes to cause him to act this way. I say back very clearly and firmly, stop beating yourself up. This is all about him, not you. It's his fault for turning his back on you and God. I'm sure you haven't been a perfect wife, but that's no excuse for the sinful choices he's making. And I've said over and over to clients like this, usually ladies, sometimes men, whatever you've done wrong as a spouse pales in comparison to what he's doing now, which is ending your marriage and maybe being in an affair. As a clinical psychologist who's seen hundreds of couples in therapy, I've had a lot of experience with husbands and wives who have become aliens. I've talked to them. I've looked into their eyes. I've heard their rationalizations, distortions, and lies. They're in their own little worlds, their own private realities. Satan has fooled them into believing that what they're doing is right, 
The trouble is they don't know it. They are completely deceived and no one can convince them that the path they're on will destroy them. They just don't get it. I make my attempt. I'm a blunt guy, as you can tell. I will speak to them directly. You're sinning. You're wrong. You're an adulterer. Stop it. I'll refer them back to their marriage vows. They don't care. It ends up being, of course, the couples both sitting there. It ends up being support for the wife if she's the one being left, but he doesn't care. Listen to this and listen closely. The spouse who wants out has a very clear, very carefully planned agenda. He wants to retain the upper hand and stay in control of your relationship. By keeping you confused and emotionally distraught, he feels better about himself and what he is doing. Your ragged ups and downs and feeble efforts to win him back confirm that divorce is the only option. I mean, why would anyone want to stay with a pathetic basket case like you? Now, that seems harsh, but that's how these people think. They've told me so. These people that want out of their marriages for bogus reasons. He will assure you of his deep regret for the pain he is putting you through. He'll say, honey, I'm so sorry this is happening. I feel terrible seeing you so miserable. Baloney, I say, most of the time, he wants you to be in pain. The more depressed and weak you are, the better divorce deal he's going to get. You're thinking only of saving the marriage and he's adding up dollars and cents. I've known plenty of persons who meticulously plotted to overwhelm their spouses so they could win custody of the kids. This is an evil person now. There's no other word for it. The real skill is in smashing the spouse to bits without seeming to do so. They still want to maintain their reputation, you see. Some are brazen and crude about it, but most are clever and subtle. One of the classic techniques is the let's be friends approach to divorce. He sadly admits that he doesn't love you and the marriage has to end. What a shame. But that's no reason why you can't be friends. He wants you to agree that you both tried, but your marriage just didn't make it. These things happen. If you play along and act like a real chum, he comes out smelling like a rose. You have legitimized your own divorce. Grasping these harsh realities will help propel you past your denial, bewilderment, and pain. By the time your partner runs you over, you are way behind in the race to salvage your marriage and family, and frankly, your life. You've got to catch up and make an impact on your overconfident, determined, and possibly soon-to-be ex-spouse. You can do it with a series of decisive steps. What kind of steps? Well, that's what the next podcasts are going to be about. Please tune in. And again, if you're in this situation where you your spouse wants out, they're not happy, I can help you. It's what I do. Been doing it for 33 years now, along with Sandy, my wonderful wife. Get the Don't Love You Anymore book. You'll find that on my website, davidclarkphd.com. It's also an ebook. It, the book is still in print, and probably on Amazon. Uh, phone advice may be very helpful because you need a strategy. And if you need a strategy before you're going to listen to all these podcasts, then or even afterwards, call me. Go to the website. Contact me. We can do a phone advice session. There's also email advice for, for less money because I want to help you get through this and give you a chance to save your marriage. And if your marriage can't be saved, you got to move on, take care of your kids, get a job, rebuild. So stay tuned for the next podcast and we'll continue with this series on My Spouse, Once Out.